Hello to all. Uh, today we will discuss uh, a very important phylum of an invertebrate and that is the Platyhelminthes. And this name Platyhelminthes was first of all suggested by the scientist known as the Gegenbohr. Okay. And as the name is indicating Platyhelminthes, Platy means flat and Helminthes means worm means the body of these uh, worms is dorsoventrally flattened the body of these worms is dorsoventrally flattened and hence they are popularly called as flat worms it has been seen that in this phylum approximately there are 13000 species there are total how many species 13000 species and uh, most of them are endoparasites most of them are endoparasites uh, of the animals that means they are found inside the body including human beings okay there are also few flatworms which are found in the human bodies also and they are uh, acting as endoparasite and there are few creatures there are few creatures which may be free living and are aquatic which may be free living and are aquatic and as we know very well that uh, all the worms generally all the worms are having the bilateral symmetry all the worms are having the bilateral symmetry as well as they have three germ layers as well as they have three germ layers that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and that's why they are triploblastic also they have organ grade level of body organization also they have organ grade level of body organization and as we know that maximum members are endoparasites maximum members are parasites so the parasites are not having the locomotory organs they are generally devoid of locomotory organs because they are living as parasite they don't have to move from one place to another and hence the locomotory organs are absent but because maximum forms are parasitic so they have adhesive organs they have adhesive organs like suckers hooks to adhere with the host body to adhere with the host body so they have adhesive organs like suckers hooks etc okay and with the help of these they are uh, they can attach easily with the host body it has been seen that in some members the epidermis is ciliated the epidermis sometimes it has been seen that it is ciliated okay in Ascheelminthes and Ascheelminthes phylum or in the round worms we see that generally the epidermis is ciliated but here we see that the epidermis uh, sometimes is ciliated and the body wall on the body wall of the parasitic animals on the body wall of the parasitic animals a thick cuticle is present okay and this thick cuticle will protect the parasite and this thick uh, this thick cuticle will protect the parasite from the digestive enzymes of the host because we know very well that they are living as an endoparasite so the digestive juices of the host body will try to act on this parasite but to get protected from the digestive enzymes they have a thick cuticle muscles found in their body wall muscles found in their body wall are mesodermal muscles found in their body wall are mesodermal and remember this thing that below the epidermis below the epidermis uh, th three types of the muscles longitudinal muscles circular muscles and oblique muscles are found just below the epidermis three types of the muscles longitudinal circular and oblique muscles are found and as we know that they are flat forms as we know that they are flat forms they are flat dorsoventrally okay so they are acylomate they are acylomate they are not having any type of silomic cavity so they are acylomate a means absent silomate means silom they are acylomate but in between the various organs in between the various organs in between the various organs a solid loose mesodermal tissue in between the organs a solid loose mesodermal tissue called mesenchyma is present so remember this thing that they are acylomate but in between the various organs a loose mesodermal tissue is present called as the mesenchyma okay 
Now, the most important feature of this phylum is the excretion occur through specialized cell. Excretion in them, uh, it has been asked in NEAT exam many times that excretion, how does excretion takes place in the platea helminthes members? So the excretion occur through specialized cells which are called as, which are called as the flame cells, which are called as the phloem cells or they are also called as the solenocytes or protonephridia, right? Excretion occur through specialized cells known as flame cells or solenocytes or protonephridia and not only they are concerned with excretion, not only they are concerned with excretion but they are also helpful in osmoregulation but they are also helpful in osmoregulation and uh, the digestive system is incomplete digestive system is incomplete they have a blind sac body plan means they have the mouth but they don't have the anus they don't have the anus and in tap worms in tap worms okay the digestive system is completely absent why because it is a total uh, totally it is an endoparasite Right? So there is no need of the digestive system because they will feed on the, on the host body. They absorb nutrients directly from the host through their body surface. They absorb nutrients from the host directly through their body surface. Uh, it has been seen that in these phylum members, the skeleton system is totally absent, circulatory system is absent and respiratory system is also absent. Okay? and they respire with the help of their body surface they respire they respire through their body surface and uh, anaerobic respiration occur in the endoparasite why because the place where the endoparasites are living that place is devoid of the oxygen so in them the anaerobic respiration occur in the absence of the uh, anaerobic respiration means there is no oxygen nervous system in them nervous system in them is ladder like and it consists of a nerve ring and the longitudinal nerve cords all right nervous system is ladder like and it consists of a nerve ring and longitudinal uh, nerve cords sexes are not separate in them sexual dimorphism is not found they are bisexual they are bisexual and fertilization in them is internal fertilization in them is internal and development generally it has been seen that it is indirect though there are few forms which have which can have the direct development but generally it has been seen in maximum cases it has been seen that development is indirect means larva is there development through larva just now within a couple of minutes we will be discussing about the various type of the larvas also which are associated with this phylum members and this larva may be one or many you will see that there are a lot of larval stages here okay so we will discuss just now some members have high regeneration capacity you all know that the lower invertebrates have great power of regeneration and some members have here a great power of regeneration say for example is planaria the greatest power of the regeneration the greatest power of the regeneration is found in the planaria all right so uh, these are some important uh, characteristics now we'll be discussing about the various type of the larvas and the different uh, examples right of organisms which are associated with this phylum. So, Dugatia, the most important member is the Dugatia or the Planaria. It belongs to the class, it belongs to the class Turbillaria. Remember this thing that Platy Helminthes is the phylum and class, there is a class known as the Turbillaria. So, it belongs to the class Turbillaria, Dugatia or Planaria and it is actually found in the fresh water. It is actually found in the fresh water. It is nocturnal, comes out at the night time and it can reproduce by it can reproduce by sexual and asexual method you might have heard about uh, the the uh, transfers uh, transfers binary fission okay transfers binary fission occur in the plain area uh, so it is a uh, transfers binary fission is a sort of a asexual uh, method fine so let's now discuss about some other members also now second important example is the fasciola now fasciola is called as the liver fluke it is also called as the sheep uh, liver fluke and it belongs to the class trimetoda basically there are three classes turbillaria trimetoda and cystoda of the phylum platyhelminthes you have seen that the dugatia or the planaria was belonging to the class turbillaria and it belongs to the class trimetoda uh, fasciola or also called as the sheep liver fluke and it is a diagenetic Endoparasite. Diagenetic means its life cycle is completed in two hosts. Primary host, 
and the secondary host. Primary host is the ship and the secondary host is the snail. All right. Uh, there is no uh, human here. Na? Uh, there is no human here or fasciola never affects the humans. It causes liver rot disease. It causes liver rot disease in the case of the ships. And you can also call it as it is a sort of a kirosis disease, liver kirosis disease. And just now I have talked about that uh, the phylum platyel menthes members have indirect development. Generally they have indirect development. So there are many larval stages. There are many larval stages, say for Miracidium. Miracidium is the stage which enters into the snail body, which enters into the snail body, means it is the infective stage for the snail, Miracidium. Then it changes into sporocyst, then the redia, then the cercaria, and then the metacercaria. And metacercaria is the infective stage for the ship. Miracidium is the infective stage for the snail body, and metacercaria is the infective stage for the ship. Uh, now, these larvae are very, very important. Sometimes sequence is asked of the various larval stages found in the fasciola. So, you must always remember that M, S, R, C, M. Miracidium, Sporocyst, Redia, Cercaria, Metacercaria. You have to remember in the sequence. Miracidium, Sporocyst, Redia, Cercaria and Metacercaria. Fine. Now, the another example of the class Trimetoda. This is also the example of the Trimetoda. Now, another example of the class Trimetoda is the human blood fluke. Is the human blood fluke, which is also called as the Cystosoma. Why? Because here the humans are affected, and the primary host here is the human being, and the secondary host is the garden snail. Garden snail means it is also a diagenetic parasite. It is also a diagenetic parasite and completes its life cycle in two hosts. Primary host is the human being and the secondary host is the garden snail. And here you can see only three larval stages. M, S, C. Miracidium, Sporocyst and Cercaria. Miracidium, Sporocyst and Cercaria. Means here you can see that Redia and Metacercaria stages are absent. Here only there are how many stages? Three stages. Miracidium, Sporocyst and Cercaria. Fine. Now, another one is that Paragonimus. Paragonimus is the lung fluke worm because it affects the lungs so paragonimus is the lung fluke worm and it also belongs to the class trimetoda now comes to a very important member of this phylum and that is known as the tinea solium tinea solium is called as a pork tap worm it is called as a pork tap worm and it belongs to the class cestoda it belongs to the class it belongs to the class cestoda and here also the life cycle is completed in two hosts, means it is also a diagenetic parasite and the primary host is the human being and the secondary host is the pig. The primary host is the man and the secondary host is the pig and it also develops through many larval stages. It also develops through, it also develops through many larval stages. The larval stages of the tinea solium are the oncosphere, oncosphere, hexacanth, bladder worm, and cysticercas. Again, these larvas are very important and I have seen that uh, in various medical examinations this question has been asked that development is through various larval stages such as oncosphere, hexacanth, bladder worm and the cysticercas. And the human being get infection from undercooked pork which is containing the cysticercas larva. Fine. How does human gets infection? Human gets infection from the undercooked pork which is containing the cysticercus larva and it causes a disease which is known as a teniasis and uh, this teniasis will be discussed in the disease section i have already discussed some diseases related to bacteria viruses helminthes disease so in that section i will be discussing all these diseases what is this teniasis what is this liver rot disease and all because this is not the right time to uh, discuss all the diseases now one thing you have to remember is that the body of tapworm. The body of tapworm is segmented. Normally, the other members of the phylum platyhelminthes are unsegmented. But it has seen that the body of the tapworms is segmented and the segments are called as the proglottids. The segments are called as the proglottids. There is one more member of class Trimetoda. There is one more species of class Trimetoda. And that is the beef tapworm. Remember, this was the pork tap worm, known as the tinea solium. 
Now we are studying the beef tapworm known as the Tenia saginata. Species has been changed. Uh, here the primary host is the human being, but the secondary host instead of the pig, the secondary host instead of the pig is the cattle, right? And this beef tapworm infects the beef eating population only. Those persons who are feeding on the cattle beef, they are affected by this. So beef tapworm infects beef eating population only. Okay, so this was the phylum Platyhelminthes and we have discussed all the general characters as well as we have discussed all the important uh, members of this phylum. So thanks a lot for watching me. In the coming days, I will be uploading some more videos based on the animal kingdom. So thanks a lot. Thank you.